Hey guys, let's get right into it. Porosity is a measure of how much water or oil your hair can absorb and hold on to. When new growth first comes out, all the cuticle scales are attached, uniformed, flat, and tight. Side note, did you know cuticle layers are made from dead cells that overlap each other to form scales on the surface of your hair? Anyway, where was I? Yeah. Your new growth is the strongest and most intact your hair will ever be. Its tight, uniform pattern holds all your other inner layers in place and keeps them from unraveling. It also blocks too much moisture from getting in and weakening your hair fibers. And once just the right level of moisture is in, the cuticle layers hold onto it tight. In other words, your new growth has the lowest porosity on your head. As your hair grows out and experiences life, it gets a little beat up. The once tight, flat, and uniform scales become bent, lifted, burnt, and even ripped out, making it harder for it to do its protective and moisture regulating work. In other words, your hair becomes higher and higher in porosity as it grows out. And once the inner cortex layer is exposed, the hair strand just starts to unravel and break really easily. I'm gonna be honest with you, there is no way to avoid this progression. It will happen. But unless you're doing the most, your hair shouldn't get to this level too fast. At least not to the point where you can't retain a lot of length. So the goal should not be to stop damage, it should be to slow it down. From what I've seen, here are the four main, let's call them porosity accelerators. These porosity accelerators apply to people with low porosity and to people with naturally high porosity hair. Because the main difference between these two hair types is that due to your already fragile and thinner cuticle layers, naturally high porosity hair types experience the same cuticle damage easier and quicker than low porosity hair types. Cuticle damage that's barely noticeable to low porosity hair types can be a major setback for those with naturally high porosity hair. This fragility makes it really important for those with naturally high porosity hair to be very, very, very gentle and protective with their hair. So as I go through this list, please keep in mind that it applies to both naturally low and high porosity hair types. Heat is interesting because if used correctly, it can be an instrumental tool for length retention. But at the same time, just one mess up can set you all the way back and make your hair so porous that it's limp and lifeless, AKA heat damage. I posted a heat series recently with details of how I use heat in my hair. Not just technique, but what type of blow dryer to use based on your hair type, a different way to look at heat protectants, and how I care for my hair in a stretch state. You can find the links to the heat series right here or below in the description section. The first time you feel how soft your hair is after greenhousing with a deep conditioner and a shower cap overnight, it's easy to get hooked, especially if your hair is low in porosity, but too much of a good thing can quickly turn bad. When your hair is under sweat box conditions, your cuticles temporarily weaken and fray. The longer you keep the shower cap on your head, the more your cuticles are weakened. That's what allows the product you're using to freely penetrate into and soften your hair. After rinsing your hair, and it's dry and styled, your cuticles seal back up. The problem with the greenhouse method is if you use it too long and too often, your cuticles can permanently weaken, resulting in higher porosity hair. I'll talk more about this and ways to use the greenhouse method as a tool in a future video. I put over manipulation and neglect together because they kind of go hand in hand. A lot of us see neglect as a way to avoid over manipulation. You think, 
If I just leave my hair alone, it'll figure itself out and grow. And on the other hand, a lot of us also think that if we overwash, overtreat, overtrim, overstyle, and more commonly overproduct our hair, all our extra efforts will result in guaranteed length retention. As with many things in life, natural hair care and overall body care is about exploration, balance, and self-control. Do your research and be observant of yourself and your hair. You're not looking for a one-size-fits-all or a magic pill because they don't exist. You're looking for your balance. With all the noise around us, it's really important to practice self-control and not jump on an idea just because it's working for some people. A lot of you that are watching feel like long-term protective styles aren't really that helpful and in many cases sets you back. Well, you're not imagining things. In the next video, I'm going to show you my current protective style regimen. It's going to be very detailed. I'm going to try to cover the who, what, where, why, and hows. So I hope it helps and adds to your ongoing research. Chemicals are kind of self-explanatory because they all have the same function. They eat through your cuticles to reach and manipulate your inner cortex layer so they can quickly decrease your hair's porosity with just one use. I talked about how they do this in detail in the relaxer video, pH series, hair dye series, and the bacon soda video. So to recap, the four main reasons your hair's porosity is rapidly increasing could be from heat damage, greenhouse overload, over manipulation and neglect, and the use of harsh chemicals. In the next video, I'm going to give you tips on things you can do to decrease your porosity. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.